this little sprig of a yellow flower to the art class the other day. And in fact, she brought a few, so I thought it might make a nice quick watercolour sketch study for everybody to do, including myself, I had a go. Um, I think it's called Yellow Flax, but I'm not sure. If anybody out there knows, let me know. But that's the nearest image I could find on the internet. It's a shrub, it grows as a shrub. So this is the little painting I produced. And I'm going to recreate this for you, just to show you how I went about it. Quite simple, no pencil beforehand, just keeping the colours simple and using a lemon, sennelier yellow, sap green and I think burnt umber. Then I've used a little bit of Payne's grey for shadows and details there. Now, before I start anything, I really observe the object first. I look at roughly where I'm going to place it on the paper. If I've got objects like leaves, buds, flowers, what's the distance between them? How am I going to break it up? Things like that and the angle of everything. So do take a few minutes observing your subject. I can't emphasise that enough. OK, so let's get started. As I say, a quick little watercolour sketch. I'm using a number six brush and that's all I will use. Now I'm starting off just to get an idea of the stem area that goes to the first flower. Then there's a gap between the next flower, the little bird, and then we go on to the leaves at the end. See how light I am keeping my colours. And this is an impression of it. Please remember, it's not a botanical drawing. It's just a little watercolour sketch. And I seem to have a dirty mark. I do apologise for that. OK, so I've put roughly my area in of where the stem is going. I'm now going to take some lemon yellow and I'm just going to roughly put the petals. OK, now I've counted them. So we know how many there are. There are, in fact, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they overlap. See how I'm using my brush to make the marks? And I'm not being too fussy about the shapes, and there will be bits overlapping and coming round the back. And then I've got this partially open bud. So we'll pop that there for now. So we're just getting an idea. Now I can see there are some highlights on those petals. So I'm going to dab out some of the yellow now to let the white come through a bit so that we've got the highlight, which in fact will emphasize the curve of the petal. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, let's go in again <coughs> with a little more sap green. We've got a little bud coming out here and another little bud coming out here. Now I've got two leaves, one, one there and another one which goes up there. And that one's gone quite browny actually, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of yellow ochre just drop that in while it's wet. In fact, we'll have a bit in there as well. See, I'm working very quickly just to get the feeling of it. Okay, now I'm going back into my sap green to get it a bit deeper, less water, more pigment. And I'm coming in again on this twiggy bit. We'll have a bit because if you look at the twig, you can see it's got sort of like flat edges and little grooves on it, so we can imply that. Have a bit more green on there, <coughs> and we've got some more little buds here, and let's put a bit more green on there. Okay, now 
I'm coming to a bit of the sennelier yellow, which is a darker yellow, and I'm just going to put let a little bit bleed because if you look inside the petal, I don't know if you can see that very well, there's little yellow, yellow bits there, so we'll do that. And here I'm using a bit to show the shape of the bud that is within the flower petals which have opened. Now that green is quite dark, so I'm taking a little bit of burnt umber just to make it a bit more browny colour, this little bud. And also on the, the stem, it's still fairly wet, so it's nice that it's going to bleed. And some of these leaves look quite browny colour. And we've got little buds at the end. And the buds are quite, um, I'm going to use the lemon, but they're, they're a bit sort of orangey colour. Let's just put a bit of lemon on there just to remind myself so I know what they are. Always a good idea. I've just pinched a bit of Venetian red just to pop in there. Right, let's get some more colour on the leaves and the stemmy bits. My neighbour's chatting outside, so I hope that doesn't disturb you too much. We have little dark bits, little sort of stray strands of sepals or little leaves, things like that. Call them what you will. Let's just soften that out while it's still wet. I think I'm going to put another leaf in there, just because I can. See, we're getting a nice, loose little sketch. Now, that is all still very wet round by those petals, so I don't want to disturb them too much. So let's come back to the stem and we'll have another leaf. Let's have another leaf up here. Because it does sort of sprout a little bit in areas. We put the inference of a leaf there. And some more little little bits there. And let's go back to this. Looks a bit washed out next to the other one. Taking a bit more sap green. I quite like those little buds. Let's put they seem to it seems to have lots of little little leafy bits clustered around these areas. So that's what we'll do. Right, now let's look back at these flowers. Again, I needed that little highlight on that petal there. Ooh, there goes a car. Can't do much about that, I'm afraid. So lift a little bit of colour out, just to get that curve in the petal. You'll notice it more when I've put a bit more colour on here. Let's 
put a bit more Venetian red just on that, just to ring the changes a bit. Not too much. Right, now we've got this darker yellow which we've been using. I want to just sort of put a little bit more, trying to create this this little, it's opened up now, it would do, wouldn't it? But it was sort of like a little bud shape there. So I'm just trying to make that look a bit more buddy. And let's just pull a little of those yellow bits out. In fact, let's make that a bit more solid in the middle. And let's put a bit of that yellow on there. Okay, now, we are nearly there. Let us now look at some shadow. Good old Payne's Grey, mixed on a dirty palette, which always gives you a good colour. And I'm just going to go, and I've got to go carefully because it's not always dry. I'm going to do a line here. Soften it out. The light's coming this way, so we want to imply that there's some shadows there, but though, of course, that's not touching the surface. Let's just put a few little bits there, show a shadow, and then we're going to have a shadow around here. shadow round here and you can see it's bled there but we're not not going to worry about it as I say this is just a little sketch just a little quick oh let's just tap that off little watercolour sketch for your nature sketchbook or whatever you have. Right, okay, just dump that off a little bit. Let's just soften that out. Right, now I'm going to dab that because I want to go in with some shadow there. And I'm just going to do a little bit, still using the same brush. A little shadow that's bled, it's okay, don't don't panic. And then round here, because I want to make that shape a bit more obvious. Coming back with some yellow, lemon yellow. Leaving that highlight, putting another petal round there. And likewise round there, accentuating that petal. Blending that darker lemon a little bit. It's always starting light and adding more colour as you go along. And now we can go back and dab some of this stronger yellow in there. And that will do. Now let's have a look at the one I did earlier. Oops, which way am I going? There we go, take that out a bit. 
so never as good the second time never as good but at least it shows you the way I was going about it so there you are a little spring flower study for you go out pick a sprig of something and have a go